So what we're really looking for is when they say peace and safety. How is the war going? It's moving. Remember what we're looking for when they say peace and safety, but what would possibly cause that? Okay, Ross's understanding, I'm just giving it to you the way that I see it. And that is, I'm keeping my eyes on two things. One of the hostages and the other one is this Sinwar guy. Either one of those found or brought forward would be basically an end to the war and would be demanded by the international community and Israel at that time, I believe. Israel now and the people of Israel would be saying, we can move back into our homes again. We can live in Israel in a period of time that right now they would have peace and they would feel safe, something they haven't done for a lot of years. So again, the war is moving along. Israel's definitely succeeding. They're getting closer and closer to actually being able to find the hostages and Sinwar. And as of today, I actually read that they are certain that they know where he is. So that's the war situation. More on that coming up next few days as I see things change. That's not what I'm here for. Okay, what this community, this channel, you folks that come here, I've always said this before, you're astute, you're very wise when it comes to scripture. Many of you have shown you know scripture better than me. Because see what it is, is the ones that come here are the ones that are probably, and this is no offense to anybody, are really quite advanced people when it comes to scripture. And they know what they're looking for. And so the YouTube surfers, as they go through, they hear and then they believe something that somebody says and then they come over here to this channel and I don't think that I need to explain myself because so far everyone's pretty much understood what it was that I was talking about but there is this one well there's two actually big tripping places where people just trip over and over and over again and it's being taught out there differently than the way I see it now I'm going to give it to you my way and explain what it is that and how I see it. And if you should understand it and follow through, all the other scriptures that I have been talking about fall right into place. As you read them, you go, wow, I've had something out of order. And, and now if I put it in this order, it makes sense. Remember the timeline? Okay, you can make a smaller version and carry it around with you because you've got to know when something's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to cover one basically and one just lightly. The first one lightly, Daniel 9. If you do not understand Daniel 9, hardly any end time prophecy scriptures are going to fall into place. You'll be mixed up, I promise you. I was for years until I finally understood Daniel was talking about the Jews only. That's your hint if you want to study that, but that's not today. Today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring those up to speed that have come here to this channel, and they're saying, but wait a minute, Ross. See, don't you understand that the Antichrist has to show up first before the actual tribulation can get started? It, it, it says so very clearly in Scripture. Whenever I have given Scripture and I've talked about it, I've, I've said this to you before, folks, what you have to do is you have to read before the Scripture, then you have to read after the Scripture. I'm pointing as if a page was right in front of me. Whatever Scripture I'm going to use, you have to read before that and you have to read after that. Let's get into Paul. Paul, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Paul is building churches. Churches are being established, and as these churches are being established, they write letters. They write letters to Paul and they say, hey, can you straighten this out for us? And Paul writes letters back again. And that's where you get what we're going to be talking about today. And that is Paul writing letters to the Thessalonians. And remember what Paul's job is, is to the Gentile world. He's to create the church. And those Jews that are willing to believe Jesus as their Savior would be the church. All right, let's get right into it because, I'm, folks, this is so important to understand. And when you do, those of you that do not understand this, this is going to open up the scripture in other places. And those that have come to me and said, no, Ross, the rapture can't happen until the Antichrist is revealed. Let's get right into it, folks. This is so, so important. You can see my animation as I become excited about this stuff because it's, it's basically really just simple. And, uh, but if people don't, they don't read uh, into, into uh, what's going on. So 
uh, 2 Thessalonians 1, here Paul is going to write, uh, unto the churches, here we go, the building of the churches, so we understand that properly. Okay, next, uh, grace unto you, he greets them. Number three down here, I'm going to paraphrase quite a bit of this because I'm going to go through it rapidly, but the important parts I'll highlight here for you. Uh, we are bound to thank God always for you uh, as it is meet. Meet understood in scripture almost always is when we meet for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. If you want to replace this word meet with wisdom, it would probably work in most scripture throughout the Bible. Because that your faith groweth exceedingly, hello folks, that's what we're doing here. It's almost like Paul is writing to us here. And the charity, which is love for the others, and every one of you towards each other and aboundeth. So that we ourselves glory in the churches of God. And patience, faithful in all your uh, persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. You're going to be enduring tribulations. Other scripture tells us you have to. Uh, let's see. What's, what's my fine notes here say? Um, you're enduring. That's what that says right there. Uh, what you folks are. <laughs> a lot of you are going through a lot of trouble actually right now. Which is, uh, is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy. This is one of a couple places that you'll be thought of as being counted worthy. Uh, no, this is a separate study, and I don't mind doing that with you folks if you would like me to, but to be found worthy is to be done to you as you are being sanctified on your walk on this earth. Okay, so well, I won't get into that right now. Okay, now, so it, the kingdom of God, which for ye also suffer... I just want to take a break right here because many people say I'm going through a lot of trials and tribulations right now. Well, of course you are, and so am I. And that was something that we were told that was going to happen, as I said earlier here. Uh, faithful saying, Timothy 2.12. I'm just going to take you over to where he's speaking to Timothy. I think I've got that on the bottom here, me and my papers, my notes. This is Second uh, Timothy now, not Thessalonians. So this, he would be speaking to Timothy. He says, is, this is a faithful saying. He says that if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Words of wisdom, folks, to understand what it is here that also that Paul is making a reference to. Seeing it, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to uh, rec recompense Recompense, sorry folks, tribulation to them that trouble you. So uh, I did a little separate study on that so you don't get confused here. Let me, um, let me take you to that. And what this is basically saying is, is um, seeing it is a righteous thing, uh, through God, neither rewards nor punishment in this life is a general way, yet he often gives proofs of his displeasure, displeasure, especially against those who persecute the followers. They, therefore, who have given you tribulation, troubles in your life, uh, shall have tribulation in recompense. Recompense. Sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, and I took this from Adam Clark's uh, commentaries where I got that. So you understand that it is possible that God would bring against your enemies some sort of a shelter, you know, a shield of some sort, uh, move on to your next part of your life. And, and that's, that was my understanding of that. Very, very simple understanding. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but that's not where we're going today. Seeing it is a righteous thing, God, okay, so number seven, and here, here it's important right here. Okay, so, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. He, he's saying this, there's a group of people, there's somebody out there that's bothered by something greatly here, and he says, come with us and I'll show you. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, okay, needs an answer. He's answering something in regards to, we go back to what I just said, Okay, mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey 
not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When is God, when is Jesus Christ going to return? When is he going to return? Do we have to go back to our little timeline? Okay, there's, um, here. <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ returns right here with all the saints, with all the angels. This is going to be a mighty thing that's going to happen. That's the day of the Lord. That is one of the days of the Lord. Here's our tribulation. Here's our seven-year period. Here's the start of the tribulation right here. This is the other time which would be seen as the day of the Lord. This is when Jesus returns, but he comes in the clouds and those that are his are gathered up dead first, come up and meet in the air and then forever with God in heaven. Two completely different times, folks. You must completely understand that. And you can call it the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, whatever you want, but understand the two. But in scripture, it's always understood. If you read before and you read after, and I'm reading before, in flaming fire, that is not the rapture, folks. And what was their concern to know about? Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, end of tribulation, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all of them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. In that day. Um, what day? In that day. Again, what did he describe before that? Okay. He's talking about at the end of the tribulation. In that day. That's what he's speaking of. Let's see, what does my side note say? Uh, it can't be their day when Jesus returns. Uh, what day is the question mark. We're back here again now to where he's going to talk about something. Uh, wherefore, also we pray always for you that your God would count you worthy. Here it is again. Uh, another study for another time of his calling. It's done unto you, folks. Don't, don't worry about that right now. And fulfill the good pleasure of his goodness in the work of faith with power, that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God. Okay. Paul writing a letter. And what were they concerned about? The day of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about to the Thessalonians, Thess 2 Thessalonians 1. They're concerned. When's he going to return? And that's what Paul was talking about. Hopefully I made that really clear. Now let's get right to the question. 2 Thessalonians, we're getting close to where people get this mixed up all the time. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What was he just talking about? Yeah, the end of the tribulation. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with the saints and the final punishment against those that don't believe. Now, here, end. End. There's a second and another time. By our gathering together unto him. When is that? So he's describing the day of the Lord when our Lord Jesus Christ returns to the beginning of the tribulation to gather the church and bring them home. Now the second day he's talking about is when Lord Jesus Christ returns with the saints. And here it is right here. The question is by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then that's the question. Just take all this other stuff out. Right here by the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. Now you've got the question. Paul's going to go on and answer it. Okay. And he says, and by our gathering together unto him. And there is what you would see as the rapture. That ye, need, uh, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by the Spirit, nor by the Word, nor by the letter from us, as of that day of the Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there, there come a falling away, first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What did he just say here? He just said that the day of the Lord coming to this earth will be preceded by, is going to be preceded by the, the rapture of the church. It's going to, the rapture of the church is going to be coming, and you would know the rapture would have happened when you see the son of perdition showing up and you will see and understand then that after that will be the day of the Lord when he Jesus returns to this earth 
So he makes it extremely clear. He who opposes exalted himself above that and is called God in worship and that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. So again, let me just go back over this again so this doesn't get confused anymore. 2 Thessalonians 2. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, stop right here, end by their gathering together. Again, the two. That ye need not be troubled or shaken in mind, be troubled neither by the spirit nor by the word nor by the letter from us. And again, the letters of Paul that he's answering is that day of Christ is at hand. And then let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away. And that's what? The tribulation. And the man of sin be revealed. What's that? Middle tribulation. So these things must happen before that day happens. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away. First, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, folks, if you want to twist this around and say, no, you see, the son of perdition has to come first. That just negates a bunch of other scripture. You might as well just take it out of the Bible and just say it, it's, not, it's not there. And, and one of them is Daniel 9. So if in the sequence of, Daniel 9 makes it very clear, 24 through 27. He makes it very clear what's going to happen. The son of perdition shows up and confirms a covenant. Then from there, Satan in the center of the tribulation returns. And then from there, at the end of that tribulation, that's the end of all. That's our Lord Jesus Christ returns. One, two, three, right in a row. So I would have to leave out what Paul said in order to be able to see to it that the son of perdition must show up first and then the rapture, which, again, those two things are the most misunderstood that once you just erase what you've been taught and start all over again and try it, you can always go back to your old way of thinking if you want. But Daniel 9 makes it extremely clear that he is talking about the Jews, not the Gentiles. So in Daniel 9, the gap between the 69th week and the 70th week, which the 70th week hasn't started yet, that gap was the filling of the fulfillment of the church. So in order for the last seven to get started, and that's when at God's discretion, when it starts, the church is not there. They're not needed. He's not talking about the Gentile world. He didn't pray to God, Daniel, did not pray to God to tell me about the Gentile world being involved. He says, I want to know about the Jews specifically. And God told him. This is for the Jews to understand. But you see, Paul saw that the Thessalonians were getting that mixed up, just like we are today. This teaching is for us today as much as it was way back then. He's saying clearly, that makes it understood. You read before, he was talking about in, in first Thess or Second Thessalonians 1, he was talking about the return of Jesus when the saints are there with him, when the angels are there with him. And Thessalonians got it confused and said, no, I need this straightened out. And he said very clearly that he straightened it out for you right here. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gathering together. He's trying to distinguish the difference between the two so they would not worry about it because those things have not happened yet. Okay, <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping this is helpful to you. And, and like I said, you, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm not asking you to. But the second you see it, the way that Paul describes it and teaches it, and I accept his teaching, all of a sudden everything else falls into place. The seven-year period that God said is at his discretion to start. And what is it that we're doing here at this channel? We're taking into consideration that there's other scripture that lead us to know when that seven years is going to start. If I still had my videos in the past, and this is one of those moments of regret, is I accidentally erased many of them. But through the last six plus years, 
I have been explaining to the best of my knowledge, to my understanding of when a covenant will be enforced, not the rapture. I wasn't looking for the rapture. We talked about it. I knew it was close, and I didn't get a clarification until about, oh, about eight months ago when I said, we'll start talking about the rapture more, because that wasn't my concern. My concern was about knowing what Daniel has specifically told us. That would be a time that starts that last seven years, and that's that covenant. So it was to my great interest to figure out, wow, what could be in the covenant? I'd really like to know. And as I figured that out, as time went on, I realized it came to my understanding that you see the rapture, the church, it's not needed. So when that covenant is created and then enforced, church isn't going to be there. So I said, wow, if I can get close to understanding when it is that this rapture, this harpazo would take place, if I could figure that out, and then it dawned on us, all of us, we started learning all together. Pieces just kept coming left and right to us, and we just started assembling this whole understanding that we have now that we didn't even have six months ago. And that is, is that we're seeing what's happening to the Jews today. What's happening in Israel today is clearly in Scripture. The lost little piece of information, I should say the last little piece of information, really did come from Psalm 83, Asaph the prophet. As he drew to the conclusion and understanding that it was God's necessary, it would be God, it would be necessary for God to step in and correct what is happening. What is happening is actually happening today. It's in Scripture right before our eyes, including the hidden ones, the hostages, as I started this video out. And two things we're looking for is a Sinwar, which is the leader of Hamas, which is in Gaza Strip, being found. And the other one is the hostages. Hopefully everything works out okay for the hostages. We'll have to just wait and see. But when that happens, then you go over to Paul. Paul's writing to the church. He's telling us, he's saying, folks, when they say peace and safety, do you understand that? You don't, I need not have to write on to you folks when they're saying that. And then would come summon the sudden destruction. Psalms 83. Wow, to me, it all falls together into one big beautiful picture. And for those that keep on thinking and understanding that and want to stick with it, I please ask you to rethink it, to go back over the scripture again. Those that believe that the son of perdition must show up first, nothing can fall into place. A lot of newcomers here, folks. I want to thank all of you, uh, you know, and welcome everyone here to the newcomers and um, understand that uh, I'm sorry for not being as complete as I possibly should, but all this was taught by me through other videos going back six years. So coming forward now, I'm starting to re-explain. I'm starting to explain again and so you can get your understanding. And the teaching that is out there, the way it's taught, it, it doesn't add up to me. It doesn't make sense that the son of perdition would show up first and then the rapture, that it just doesn't work. And it doesn't work that the church is here on this earth during the time when Daniel was told was all about the Jews and only the Jews. It just only makes sense. So there's your seven years, there's your pre-trib and pre-tribulation. Okay, I'm hoping this is all helpful. Bringing you folks up to speed is an absolute delight for me. I thoroughly enjoy having this time with you folks. And uh, the fellowship again, incredible. And thank you for it. And yes, I said, the closer we get and the more I see things happening, I'll keep on coming back here and explaining. Good? Okay. Until Sunday, unless something happens in the next couple of days, I will be jumping in here. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it.